In this grasshopper tutorial for the geometric pattern section, uh, as you can see, I can produce a parametric Celtic knot example, which is a repeating pattern. And this is basically, I believe, a simple one because we have a really complicated Celtic knots, which we will model in the future. I'm going to explain how to model this in grasshopper. And for those who are new to our channel, uh, welcome. You can also watch a video up here, which I will put about uh, Grasshopper, what is Grasshopper and how you can learn it, and a one-hour video tutorial, which is about the basics. And also, if you want to uh, know more about Grasshopper and advanced lessons, we have a course, which I will put up the lessons up here, and you can also check it out and enroll in our course. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Okay, before we model this in Grasshopper, the best method you can use is to uh, first model it in Rhino and then take the steps in Grasshopper. If you look at the pattern, you can see that this has a repeating unit, which is this one, and it's completely repeating. And if you look at the centers, you can see that they are arranged. If I just show you here, they are arranged in a triangular grid. So we have to only make the unit this one and then put it in a triangular grid and finish the pattern. So how can we make this simple unit here? Uh, you can look at it like this way. If we had a circle, let me just draw on this so you can understand. If we have something like this, a circle, how can we make this pattern? We can simply have three circles here. This is one of the methods you can use to produce this. This circle, this circle here, and this circle here, okay? If we just uh, make a region difference from uh, the base circle, which is the blue one, and delete it with these three circles, we will have the pattern inside, right? So it's not really complicated. You have to just make the base unit and then put it in a triangular grid. So let's just go to Grasshopper and delete this pattern. I'm going to go to the vector section and in the grid we have a triangular grid. We have to use this to make the center of that circle and the three of them uh, of those circles. So uh, this is a plane which is the default is an XY plane. I'm going to turn this off. The size we can just give it a number. which will change the edge of the uh, triangles and then we will have the number x and y okay i'm going to give this maybe two and that's fine because uh, this one is going to be the center of the circle the base circle then we will have one here one here and one here it's basically 120 degrees like that and with an array. So uh, I'm going to use the center of this uh, triangular grid and then extract these points and produce the same circle with the same radius and then produce the results. So what we want to do is to look at the cells. You can see that the, uh, let me put the bifocals plugin so you can see what I'm doing. If you check this out, you can see that the cells are in two rows. That means uh, this one is one group, okay, and this one is in another group, and we don't need these groups. Uh, what you can do is always check out the grid section and have a flatten on the cells so you have them in one group. If you don't know what flatten is, I'm going to put up a video which is about flatten and graph and watch that tutorial. So what we want to do is to flatten this. We have these cells. Now we want the corners, so I'm going to go to the curve section and use this explode. So I'm going to explode that. The problem with the vertices is here that you have them again in groups, right? Each triangle has four vertices and that's why we have uh, 16 vertices, which is not what we want. We just want uh, all of the corners right what we want to do is to flatten it again so we have 16 and we have to delete the duplicates so if i just bake this you can see that in rhino we have many points that, that is because this uh, triangle has this corner 
this triangle also has this corner and so on and for this one you can see you have two of them because we have this one and this one let's just delete this and you can go to the vector section point and find this the call duplicates which will delete the duplicate points i'm using to duplicate giving to the point remember you have to flatten this so 16 points will come out as six that is exactly what we want now we want to pick uh, the center and the three points we need. So I'm going to go to the display section and use this point list. The point list will actually show you the number of these uh, points, but if you want to see them easily, you can right click and bake. So you can see that we need number five and we also need one, three, and zero. So let's just go to the sets list item to pick up those things and one of the five is the center so I'm going to give the index number five that's going to give us the center and another list item and I'm going to pick one three and zero so let's just set multiple integers or maybe zero three one okay let's just delete these tags and here we go so you can see that we have those points and now we have to draw the circle so I'm going to go to the curve section and draw a circle and another circle at these three ones and we're going to give the same radius uh, because we have these cells and you can see that we can give the same uh, number of the size here which has changed I'm going to give a multiplication of this that means that if I give a 1 it's going to be the complete radius if I give it a 0 0.5 it's going to be half and so on so I'm going to go to the math multiplication and give a number between 0 and okay 0 0.8 I'm going to increase that so we can say 0 to 1, that's a better one. We can also use this technique. And I'm going to increase that and give this to the first circle and those three circles we need. Okay, turn everything off. And let's just increase that. Okay, you can see that 0 0.5 is actually the place they collide so we can say that we want a number bigger than 0 0.5 and then a place like this will broke up our pattern because this is our pattern so we can also define a minimum and maximum later uh, let's just do that i want to delete uh, a region of this with these three circles we have three circles i'm going to go to the list item connected to the circles and say we have these three circles. I'm going to uh, uh, find the region difference what, uh, one at a time, okay? So first will be this one or this one, doesn't matter. We have to find a difference between this space circle with these three. So I'm going to go to the intersection, shape, and we have this region difference. Let's just do that and delete this circle with the first one. And you can see that it's producing something here. Let's just connect. Right. Let's do that again. Find the difference from this one with the second. And the difference with the last one. Now we can turn on the region difference and we have the pattern. So that was really easy. You can see that we can change this number and produce that pattern. And remember, you have to be careful about this number. 0 0.5 will start the pattern and it will go up to 0 0.8, something like that. Uh, the next part is to use this. Uh, let me just connect the surface to that so you can see this is the pattern. Now we have to put that into grid. So we are basically finished this tutorial. It's really easy and you can see how fast we produce that in Grasshopper. We're going to go to the vector grid 
and put that triangular grid again in the plane. We had the same plane. The size was the same. Now we can give a number for the extent of x and y. We can change that. And we can copy this technique. Explode, call duplicates. Remember, you have to flatten this. And we have those points. Now we have to put it on those points. So the last part is really easy. What I want to do is to go to the transform section and use this orient uh, tool. So we're going to orient this uh, geometry from the XY plane. It doesn't really matter the source because you have to put it in a plane of the same curve. And the point target is going to be these points. Uh, when you connect a point to a plane, it's going to say it's an XY plane. So that's fine. Turn this off. Now we can change the numbers here. You can see that we are finished. And now we can also change this number. Okay. Uh, I'm going to explain also the minimum and the maximum, which I have found uh, for this pattern. So you can also use it. Uh, I have uh, use this number and just zoom in to find the exact uh, place which this is going to finish and give us a complete uh, tessellating pattern uh, and in this part as you can see here I have started with this number which is the best you can get if you want a complete closed pattern here and also uh, this number is going to be the last a number you can use to just make a complete pattern because if you just see that what but with uh, let me just double click this and put it to two you can see that's going to break the pattern so this is the maximum number you can get with this number of decimals and produce the pattern that was a tutorial for the Celtic knot thanks for watching uh, remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and the bell notification button so you can get notified about our new tutorials. And I want to know what do you think about this tutorial? How was it? Uh, how did you think about this pattern? You can also make this in another way, but it's going to be more complicated. If you just zoom in, you can see that you have a unit here, which is something like this. This unit here, let me draw it with these curves and with the yellow and then find the center of this so we can also produce this curve and then use a polar array to produce the other curves and then use a central grid a triangular grid to produce this pattern but this one is the circle technique which i have used uh, i think is the most simple way you can to you can use to produce the Celtic knot and see you next time <music>